to other COGS. The CROG has a purchasing council that does several requests for proposals, such as diesel and unleaded gas. And it, in addition, they offer easy IQC program. Through a competitive bid process, a job order contract, construction task catalog is developed. And it facilitates accomplishing various individual projects with, with a single competitively bid contract. On-call contractors are ready to perform a series of ongoing projects at different locations for competitively, competitively bid prices. The construction task catalog is set up with non-prevailing and prevailing wages. Payment and performance bonds are available for each project. Public Works Finance Directors recently attended a work session on this program. They jumped on this program when they realized the, uh, the value it would be to our community. And really, what, what I'm seeing from my participation in our Council of Governments is nearly every town in our area is joining their CROG um, for, the, for, for the use. I mean, one or two purchases will pay for, pay for this uh, service. And it's a, it's a good, if you will, a regional approach that we are using the, the power of uh, multiple municipalities and therefore now multiple uh, councils of government to reduce our costs. So we'll need action to um, authorize my signature to join the CROG. I'll move to authorize the first selectman to execute the side letter agreement easy IQC program with the Capital Region Council of Governments to allow the town of East Lyme to participate in the program <coughs> as it is in the best interest of the town. Second. It's been seconded. Any further comments or questions? I noticed that you gave us an example, diesel and unleaded gasoline. What are some other examples of things that would be able to be purchased? You've, you, uh, Anna or, or there were I get a good shot of mic. There's a few people watching tonight. <coughs> yeah, when it comes to the purchasing council, you can use pricing for all the double yellow lines in town. Uh, town, all the towns use that bid. There's uh, treated salt. Um, that's the main ones that I use. To, um, it's it's very inexpensive to join the CROG to be able to have that purchasing in power because when we buy treated salt, just just alone, that's uh, last year I fought them because. Um, the, the salt vendor did not want to give us Krog's price. Krog's price was $85 a ton, and they wanted to give me 90 and I begged and pleaded and said that I didn't realize we were supposed to be in it, uh, da -da -da -da, and they finally gave me Krog's price, or else we would have paid $5 more a ton. And um, so uh, that just that alone, the treated salt, that's all the towns use, the Krog bid. So um, now the other end of it, that be easy bid, you could have a project you just can't get off the ground and you can't find local contractors that do that um, that actually can do that work. You, you might, you might not, but you're not sure if that price is competitive. This service, you actually call them up, they show up, um, This um, it's through the Capital Region Council of Government contractor, and they can get your pricing. You don't have to go forward with the pricing, but at least you have a bidded out price that you know is competitive, and they give you that number and you either you go forward or you're not. And uh, more than often than not, it's gonna be better than, you know, calling up a few contractors and getting a you know a, a number that you really aren't comfortable with so that's the beauty of this is is those projects that are just they you know if you spent five ten thousand to put the, the package together and it's, you could just call them up they 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 piece all the tasks together and it's all the contractor only makes a certain amount off of every task so it that's so all you bid. can pick and choose which things you want correct it's it's actually a it's a slant, it's a win-win for everyone because the contractor is going to lose on some jobs. Is going to win, but by having this thing throughout the whole state, they seem to think they're going to win more often than lose. But you don't have to go for it. It's just it's ability to get a pricing without having to um, advertise in the paper. You know, spend the time, mm -hmm. go you know, get three different contractors. You basically just go for them. It's all bid it out, and they give you a price. If you're comfortable with that price, you go. If you're not, and you think that you can do better. You're not committed to doing it, so it's a real, it's a real great opportunity for towns when they, when they, you know, when boards are asking, do you have three prices? Is that a good price? Sometimes we don't know because we can only get one or two contractors to even give us a price, and we're not even sure if they're trying to get a home run. So this is an ability. To, it's a bidded out process, and uh, there's a, there's a there's a book about four inches thick of all the tasks that, that have to lay, and they get a markup on every task. That's how it works out. In the book, the contractor is not the one. Those prices are set. The contractor um, 
bids on his markup to those prices, if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. Thank you. So uh, uh, just, just to clarify that, Joe, uh, so more than likely there's a electric, licensed electrical contractor that could come in and do these lamp replacements. Uh, you say, boom, there's a That's per a light kind of thing, and there's a guy already going all over the state doing this. You know, so that that would be one. Well, he, he perhaps I one have an example right now. It's something we're looking at. At the, <coughs> at the community center, the large community room that had to have all the activities in, there's three air, air handlers that service that area. The air, air handlers are completely in the attic. You cannot access them. So not only do I need to get a price and replace the air handlers, I need to get a carpenter to open a hole big enough to get them in and then to close it up so it's suitable. You could call them up, and they could – they can cover all the tasks on it and give us a price, and we can look at that price, and is that a comparable price to what a local contractor could do? So that's a great example. There's a lot of parts, and I could never draw that out of what, how to competitively bid that. And most of the time, if you go to an HVAC contractor, they don't want to do the carpentry work. So now you've got an HVAC contractor, you've got a carpenter. They take care of all that for a bid-out price. And if you don't like that price, you don't have to do it. So that's that's a good example of I, that, this exact situation I'm dealing with right now. I haven't gone forward because we don't have the ability to do that. But I thought of that project because I had, we had to cut a big hole. When you're in that big room, you look back at the back wall towards the library. There's a big attic space. We had to cut a huge hole in there to get in there to get the piece of equipment out, pull it out, replace it, put another piece in there, and close it in. And no one's going to see the light as to see that we ever did it. That's a lot of. How about we put a door on that? So when we need to get in there again, we don't have to yeah, break a wall down. That's the reason yeah. Barnes had those doors up top. That would be part. You would, if you want to do that, that's when you talk to the contractor. This outfit, we'll you talk. say this is what I, I just, want, uh, and they I'm would just, do it. I'm just picturing ten years from now when we have to I, break this, it down this, again. This situation got brought up two weeks ago. I can't ago, believe they built a building like that. I know. Okay, we'll talk about <laughs> wow. that. Um, other questions about this motion that's on the table? I believe. I'll call the vote. All in favor, say aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstain? The next item on our agenda is 2B. As you know, in May of this year, we experienced a server crash here at the town hall, major server crash. We are in the process still of upgrading our server. Well, we are still we are in the process of upgrading our servers. In the tax department, due to improper backups, we're still in data recovery mode. Portions of the disaster recovery were included as part of the annual maintenance with a software vendor. Our Walsh Associates. However, there have been and continue to be billable hours. For hours billed through uh, June 30th, 2015, we were able to handle within our budget. But the fiscal year to date, we have $1,547 in billable hours to date. And due to being early in the fiscal year, this is a non planned expense, and we're requesting a transfer from the contingency. Um, so uh, you have a motion in front of you. The hourly rate is $119 dollars an hour and um, contingency balance currently stands at about $135,000. Move to approve a transfer in the amount of $2,142 from account 0101120200500 contingency <coughs> to account 0101109200215 maintenance of office equipment <coughs> IT for tax department data recovery and forward to the Board of Finance for approval. Second. Second, any further comment? All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstain? In 2C is the authorization to allocate funds for a study to determine the best uses and costs for Old Lily B. Haynes School if given back. You'll see the cost is $9,000. We had it in our uh, capital improvement plan for $45,000 was our initial thought. It would be an extensive plan. Uh, Joe can talk about it a little bit. I'll just tell you this. Uh, because there's a few public comments, and I'll, and I'll try to tie them all in. It's not putting the, uh, the, the cart before the horse. The, the school plan is at least coming to the Board of Selectmen. Well, assuming it gets through, it's going to go to the Board of Education, and they're going to have to vote on it. Then it's going to come to us. If it passes us, not necessarily given that it will go to referendum, uh, it will go to Board of Finance. And if it goes through there, then a referendum will be scheduled. Mm. I think it would be intelligent and prudent and proper planning and management of this of the town and this board to say, listen, if we are given a building, uh, what are the possible uses of that building? 
We have needs in this town for uh, expansion of our library. This town hall has served us well, but um, town departments are, are suffering with some space, maybe. Uh, we have a police station that has been put off for 10, 12 years now. Uh, they are still in temporary quarters on Main Street. And, uh, you know, when you walk up back, it's temporary quarters. You know, it's not a permanent space. And our police force has continued to grow. And uh, should we ever go to an independent police station, we could never have it there. There's no way it would be secure or proper. Um, so uh, we need to, uh, in, in, in Jakunski, um, the firm that is putting this together for the schools has said, well, you know, it, it, they, they have kind of a, a buy-in here. They have some skin in the game. They've got to get the school project passed, and, you know, there is going to be this empty building. There are going to be questions from the public. So when, when, this, when the school does start moving to public forums, it will be nice if we had answers to this is the, these are the possibilities. And later, as a town, we will have that conversation, and we will make a decision as a town um, with debate, with, with conversation, with public forums, and then, yes, probably with a, with a referendum as well about what would be best used for, for Lily B. But to go in there blind and say, I don't know if a, a police station could fit or if a town hall could fit <laughs> if we move the the parks and rec and youth services over if that would work it'd be good to get an architect to take a look at the building uh, and just to, to, to kind of firm up the plans and how much it might cost the town is going to ask for that especially in light of an 80 or 90 million dollar school project they're going to want to know how much more and what are we going to do with that building so that's why we're asking for nine thousand dollars do you have anything to add I stood up and you pretty much covered it all. This is very important because if it, the Board of Ed's going full steam ahead with the, you know, the, the looking at the Flanders, looking at Nyack Center, and with the thought as the town gets um, Lily B, that scares me to death. I mean, that's a 110,000 square yes. foot building just to put on a thing. This building here is 20,000, the PD's eight. So we'd be taking on a 100,000 square foot building, and I heard a gentleman before saying, let's bulldoze it. Well, okay, that's an option. But there's a cost to that. Who's, I mean, is that coming out of the building maintenance budget? They can't, so it just these things are, we have to look at that building. If we do this and have, as uh, Mark said, as, as educated numbers and educated things, because I know Parks and Rec is very interesting because gym space is a huge issue in town. And, and there's you got two in there. And you've got a beautiful gym that's there. But a lot of people don't realize there's another gym in the back that, that was kind of used for special ed. So um, I am the one that got the proposal. Uh, I know Al uh, Jacuzzi and Humes is um, uh, doing the school part, but just just to let you know, Jacuzzi and Humes, Al Jacuzzi is doing the work for the uh, Board of Ed. He's kind of their expert in the schools, but uh, Brian Humes is like preeminent in, in New England for uh, for police departments and emergency. Uh, and, and this one's going to look at can we actually take the police and put them here, or can we put them over there? And, and I can't think of anyone better around that could look at this, and he happens to know because they already did all the studies on Lily B. They have all it in AutoCAD, so they're the best ones to do this. I thought originally trying to get another architect, and it would just would cost a lot more. So I know they have a little skin in the game, but I think it's a necessary evil to, to spend this money to at least have some answers to the taxpayers of this town as far as what the heck are we going to do with this building if we get it. Uh, I know the school, uh, the Board of Ed has spent some money developing the plan that they're going to uh, try to bring forward to the town for a building project in the not too distant future. And I think it's good. We need to have some idea of what we're going to do with the facility if it's going to possibly turn back over the town. After they come forward and say, yep, we voted, let's move it forward, and then we just can't say, well, now we'll figure it out. But moving for the forty-five thousand, I'm glad that number came down significantly. It's we're, we're what one fifth mm -hmm. of that now, which is far more palatable. But in getting the final answers, <coughs> Joe, I just want to make sure we get input from Parks and Rec. What do they think? Same thing with the police department. Make sure we have input from all the players that are possibly going to be asked to occupy either this building if it changes or the uh, the other facility. And I think a good point was brought up before too. Once this is done, we have to make sure this is, uh, you know, brought forward to the public numerous times in numerous venues to make sure they know exactly what our intentions are. And we can get some input. We can modify things, but 
know, to, for this to, to succeed, I think we have to get some good input from the people who are going to be stakeholders in the building as well as input from the public. Well, so. right part of the proposal, and, and we brought it up at the department head meeting the other day, and, and to, um, uh, Dave Putnam, uh, Director of Parks and Rec, uh, and uh, Bill Blanchett, the resident trooper, and all, all those people that need to, uh, that's part of this, is that Brian's, I've worked with Brian in the past, um, and they're very good at bringing those people together and get the input. And I know, it, you know, someone also mentioned the vision uh, committee and some of that. They, we can get whatever they want. It's just that we need something of, of like we need to to look at that building and know what what we could possibly do because uh, here's for Parks and Rec could want this whole area and then realize there's no air conditioning and um, that these areas is I mean you, you have to look at how these spaces can fit and and the architect already done it because they already studied this building they already know about this building they know the cost because if you had to knock this down and and put town hall over there it could cost three hundred dollars a square foot so who's paying for that. You know, that's something the taxpayers should know. And I, and I think, and I, I agree, that's a great first step. So, so. I, I, I disagree. I think we don't even know if this project is going to pass. And even if it does, how long is it going to be before the town would even be in a position to use that building? The school, my understanding is Niantic Center, would be rehoused in Lily B. Haynes while the work was going on. So we're looking at a two or three year period. Let's wait until this gets approval. We have two or three years to plan what we would do with the building. I see no reason when we are not even sure that this is going to pass to allocate this money now. Let's wait until we know this is what's going to happen. If I could just respond, Holly, the only reason I disagree with that is I think part of the decision process of the town and moving it forward, uh, a building project with the schools would be, do you got, does the town have a need for a Dolly B. Haynes? And if we can say, well, we don't know, we'll have to wait until the project's done, I, I think it's better to... But I don't, think the cons I don't think the town is going to be looking at this as what are we going to do with Lily B. Haynes afterwards. I think the town is going to be mm -hmm. looking at this as what is the best way to house our elementary school children. I think the eventual use of Lily B. Haynes is a minimal part of the equation when people are looking at what we're going to do with our school children. Uh, I would disagree because we're touting that this is, I mean, it's already been discussed that this would be, you know, a town facility that would, you know, the Lily B. Haynes, if it was vacated, would become possibly the new town hall. There's already a lot of talk about that, and I think people have to have some idea of what the intent would be. Okay. Well, I, you know, you, we you've heard we my, my, yeah. my read on this. Uh, Mark? Uh, yeah. yeah. Right. Um, what's the timeline of this? Well, the proposal says three months, but if so, the Board of Selectmen and the Board of Finance were on board with this, I'd get them going right away and try to get this, you know, within the next uh, two month or two. Because from what I understand, the, the Board of Ed is going to be doing public forums with the public. And, you know, as a taxpayer, you and I could go there and say, well, what are they going to do with Lily B? And they're going to like, oh, that's the town's problem. I, I don't know what else they're going to say. So how can the town sit there? We don't know. I mean, that's an important element of this because even if it's a year or two years down the road, what if then they want to put a PD and then everyone votes it down? Now you have a 100,000 square foot building that has no use. You have to still bulldoze it. That still has cost. Or else you're going to heat it. You're going to put electricity. I mean, I, could, I don't have the numbers of what it costs to run this building, but it's five times that, if not more, because that building is less efficient. So the operations, that's why the Board of Ed wants to reduce buildings is because they cost money. So if we take this, the town takes on this building, we're going to be paying either a lot of operational costs or bulldozing. And just to bulldoze it, you can't get a local contractor with a bulldozer to bulldoze this thing down. That's and if a we're major cost to if get If we're it. bulldozing that building and then coming back saying we need to expand our library and we need a new police station for $10 million, $12 million, whatever it ends up being, um, and oh, by the way, you know this building starting is is then five years older or ten years older and needs that much more. I think it would be nice to to, to present to the public as the schools presenting their plan to say these are the total needs and we can cover them this way and at least have a plan because there is the school plan, but it, but this town has other needs too and it'll be nice to put them <coughs> out on the table, uh, whether these can be done or not and, and maybe not maybe that building does need to come down. And that would be, you know, hopefully what comes out of the study. But I'll tell you what, Joe, the one concern I, concern I do have is what Mark was bringing up. Uh, we need actually this plan to be done pretty darn quick. Because oh, I, I, I think quick. by November, mid-November, I think the schools are starting to hit public forums. 
we wanted to start last month, but this is the process and this is the proper thing. There's right. 50,000 set aside every year, mm -hmm. the contingency and pro SIPs that are on, uh, undesignated. That's the money we're asking for. One last thing I just want to remember is um, we're going to have to start sinking some money into that PD because um, the roof leaks, the walls leak. The, uh, I just had an HVAC, uh, I just had a um, HVAC unit that just went that I'm spending ten thousand dollars. I have to. That's the heat and the AC, of course. If we may wait much longer and don't come up with a solution down there, I'm going to have to start sinking some money. We'll be back. So that's why looking at the PD here, they're they're the biggest ones. That we're here now, and I understand that if we move over there, but the P, we have to look at this PD because that building is is actually getting old and tired. And I'd encourage you, if you haven't been through it, walk through it. It right. doesn't really function. It it gets by. But it's going to need some work, and, and that's the next thing. If we don't go forward, is I'm going to have to start putting capital costs. To, to, I mean, we have to replace the parking lot. There's all kinds of things that they're just getting by over there. Let's put a motion on the table and further discussion. Uh, I'll no, that should have come first. I know. No. I'll move to authorize to allocate funds in the amount of nine thousand dollars from uh -huh. town project allocation line item 32-70-300-500-100 to pay for a study to determine the best uses and estimated costs for the existing Lily B. Haynes School if the Board of Education were to give the town this building as part of the new school project and forward to the Board of Finance for their approval. Second. It's been seconded. Any further comment? We've had a lot already. Yes. Um, the Board of Ed doesn't always get what the Board of Ed wants. There hasn't been a vote yet. Uh, Jacunsi and Humes were paid for a study. We already paid them for it. So I think that we can use what we already have. I have a lot of confidence in the people in this town. We have a lot of very smart people. We have a town building committee. Uh, we have other people that are very knowledgeable. And I think that the analysis should come from our own residents as to what they want. Uh, I can't believe that citizens of this town are going to want a police station in the middle of a school district. But that's just an initial thought. I don't think that we need um, outside experts to come in and tell us what we need. And as uh, Mr. Bergras stated, the, the, and as sitting in on several of the Board of Ed meetings, uh, the study has already been done. The, the information is there. And I think that this is, I do think that this is premature um, <coughs> and I think uh, I think we have our own citizens who know our town well, and I think that they are the people that we should use and utilize uh, to begin with. And I was not at the last facilities forum meeting. I don't know. I understand there were about 20 people that were there at the meeting, um, but that is a committee that was put together, although it took a little vacation for a while. But I really feel that we have our own town experts that could help us with this and give the townspeople's view. And uh, I agree that uh, we've got a big bonding package that we're looking at if this passes. And if it does pass, um, Haynes Building is going to be in use for some time as they re reorganize. And I, uh, I'm, not going to be, I'm not going to be voting for this. And the others. Yep. Um, and thinking back, I, I'm I'm almost certain that it, it was Jukowski and Humes that did did the uh, the middle school program and all of that. Um, and having thought back to that, there was a huge discussion on the old Lily Behane School that was torn down, and uh, and the amounts of money that we put into new roofs seven eight years prior to that. Right. New windows. Uh, saving the gymnasium because we needed gymnasiums. <clears throat> um, I, I would think they, at the time, uh, because one of the deals was whether you, the, the actual, the, the new Lily Behanes, the old middle school uh, that we're talking about, uh, much discussion was centered on whether it was worth keeping then. Uh, and walls were moving out and in and all the windows were aluminum and they had you know all of this stuff that so in the meantime we put a load of money in there a couple of cleveland boilers and uh a little back to the uh, board of head days uh learn more about boilers than i ever needed to know 
the uh, my point of all of this is I think for nine grand is not a bad deal to get them to do this and have uh, a boilerplate to refresh the memory of whether this building is is feasible to do anything in the future um, and just like uh, the Board of Ed has done we really don't on this town side we don't have a lot to go back to we don't have any of these surveys on our on our properties uh, it's all been Board of Ed Board of Ed Board of Ed with people coming in and looking at things. The, the only thing that was ever done was, uh, I believe it was also them, uh, the same architects that did the, the drawings for the new police station emergency services building that was shot down on referendum. Uh, having said all of that, I, I think we should have something in our back pocket to know where we stand, uh, if that building was feasible for any uses in the future. And how much those number, what those numbers would be, uh, I just think, uh, and this number because they're already on board, seems reasonable to me that uh, for that amount we could have a, a decent report to to go from, and uh, that that would be the money to me. I mean, the f initial money was seemed crazy, but uh, because they're already here. I believe a lot of it's probably they can just look back and uh, redo what they did from uh, 10 years ago, and a lot of it's probably sitting there. Mm -hmm. But I, I would I would uh, think we wouldn't we would uh, be real happy to have something that was actually on our side uh, working for us. They just did the study. <coughs> they just did the study for the board of ed. So why are we going to pay them? To do it for us. Well, the study is a the study. Some portion of that study is about being for a school. Mm -hmm. uh, I think we're talking about a, a number of different things, and whether you can separate that building into into other uses and, and facilities. And I think that's why the portion of this is really not that much more money. There's one element that just stood, uh, this is not all about Lily B. There's talk about in the this past building. about. Of bring in PD into this building, and how it would lay out. That's part of this. Is would feet, would PD fit here? Um, they did a space needs analysis back about 2007. The same firm, so they just had to look back. What do they need for space? And so it's not all about Lily B. And if the architect did it for Lily B, they were looking at an educational requirements for school rooms, not for the Parks and Rec department, for the town hall, for stuff like that. Th th those are different requirements. And I understand. And I respect as far as that you could get. There are a lot of intelligent people that could work with staff, but we don't know all the specifics of all the HVC and the plumbing and all the issues that go into that building and what those costs are going to be on a project of this scale. That would be really tough for the townspeople to, to know that the going rate is, you know, two hundred eighty-five dollars a square foot. And so, but these guy architects know that stuff um, better than anyone because they do the projects all the time. Kevin. I'll just uh, look. Um, just to follow up on uh, what uh, uh, Joe just said, uh, you know, as far as this building is also going to be included in it, and is it feasible? And you know, it, it that building was built as a school. Can it possibly would it fit in being retrofitted into being a town hall? Right. We don't have those answers right now. And I understand what Roseanne says very much about you know we don't want to you know jump ahead of the game, but we're looking at asking the town to or the Board of Ed may be coming forward with a proposal to a bonding package. I don't think we've ever seen anything in that amount in this town. And if I'm going to be asked to support that, and I'm a town resident, I'm going to want to know as much as I possibly can about the answers as far as what happens when we start building. Even if it's a few years down the road, I want to be as informed as possible before I make that decision to say, yep, let's bond out a, you know, several you know, tens of millions of dollars. Mark?